if somebody misses class two and needs class three, I can email them class two, etc. Yeah, I figured that's a good idea. So uh, energy, I was on energy. And how can we communicate with God or the universe or spiritual beings if they are energy? The only thing, we don't understand energy as humans. We understand everything in the three-dimensional world. What we can hear, what we can see, what we can feel, what we can touch, what we can smell, what we can taste. Those are all of our senses. In the spiritual world, all of these senses exist as, as well. They might be in another dimension. The angelic dimension could be in the fifth dimension. A lot of people say it's in the fifth dimension. Our deceased loved ones, they're in the fourth dimension. So, in order for the universe to communicate with us, we need some type of a tool, right? We need a tool to allow the universe to communicate with us. So, the tarot cards are that one of the tools that you can use. There's the I Ching, there's all different kinds of divinations that we could use. And when I teach uh, meditation, when we do a meditation, I always uh, have people imagine something uh, or create a blank screen and let something pop in. But we have to use our imagination, we have to use our intuitive side to uh, allow the universe to communicate. So um, what we want to uh, do is create like a canvas for the God or the universe to paint on so we can know our higher purpose, where, what, why we came to earth, what we're here supposed to do. Most people in readings, when I do them, they want to know their purpose. They don't feel fulfilled for the most part. And uh, that's just general. But everyone wants to, seems to want to know their purpose in life. So uh, either they're working somewhere and they don't enjoy that, or, you know, they're having to pay the bills and they're just there to do that job and they don't feel like they're being fulfilled. Uh, many people, not all people that I see, but uh, a large majority uh, feel this way. So a good way to um, allow the universe to speak with you is through the tarot. I mentioned meditation and when we do a meditation, I usually tell people to visualize themselves walking down a path. It could be in a forest, you can cross a bridge, and it has a babbling brook or whatever, and you keep walking down this path. And I usually have a final destination at the end of the path. Usually it's um, a building that you create in your mind that houses your inner spirit, your inner soul, and in that building is all your answers. So usually it happened, you know, just the last meetup we had, people were walking down the path, and someone said, uh, I was walking down the path and next thing I knew there were angel wings on my back. Uh, or I was walking down the path and I, I turned the corner and it was like, you're generating this path, but all of a sudden they turned the corner. Oh, surprise, here's Jesus. Or surprise, here's an angel. And uh, people um, are creating that canvas, that movie, for someone to, or something energetic, to show you something, to give you some answers. So when we do the meditations and the, in the, psych, in the monthly psychic awareness thing, people get answers to their things going on in their lives, and we give messages to each other. Something pops into someone's head at the meetup, and they'll say, oh... Kathy, I saw this for you, or I saw that. So we're here to help each other, help ourselves, learn and grow together, and know that the universe is energy. That communication from the universe has to happen on an energetic level, and this is a means for us to interpret that energy. The other thing is that people are energy too, aren't they? People are energy. So some person can give you a message. You could be walking in the supermarket and someone stops you and wants to strike up a conversation for whatever reason. So a person can give someone a message. And they don't need to be a psychic or anything like that. 
I recall when I was studying in Casa Vega, this lady told me, oh, you need to go see this healer, Reverend Fuller, and then another lady. And I thought, this is synchronistic. We call that synchronicity, when someone enters into our life and they give us something. So people are energy as well. And uh, these are the methods that uh, we receive to be communicated to. Sometimes you're at the right place at the right time, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's basically the intro to the class. Now I'd like everyone to go around the room and just introduce themselves. Maybe give a you know a brief uh, story about yourself or why you're here, what you're looking to learn. Any of those things are uh, totally fine. So I'd set up what I do. Penny. spiritual book and what am I to learn today and read that page exactly yeah, well, this is, I actually get energetic hits and the answers are uncanny nice so, yeah. that's interesting with the pendulum you don't have to do just yes and no you can put numbers out there you can put letters almost it's starting to get a little bit more like Luigi it is starting to get a little bit about, about that, that. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I stay away from it as well. But people do do that, and there are pendulum boards that you can get. Nice, thanks. Dee. Um, I'm Dee, and um, I'm fairly new to the group, but I've been around a lot of people that kind of asked to have this class. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Yeah, I've never sat in before. I've only heard. So. Right. She has psychic abilities herself, but she kind of shies away from them. So. I know. I would say that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Madeline. Okay. Um, I'm Madeline. I was here for a while. Well, you have some clue. <laughs> right on. Okay. Right, right. Nice. Jessica.
cards show you. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm Bethany. I actually discovered Castadega on accident, and I bought my first deck here. And then when I got home and I looked up Castadega, I was like, oh my gosh. It was so weird. Like, I didn't even know this place existed until I, I, it, I it's a long story. So, I've been doing tarot for a couple of years, and people say that I'm, I'm really good and I'm dead on, but I don't feel confident about it. I mean, I have my book memorized, but I don't, you know, I don't want to. side because normally to teach a tarot class it would probably take a half a year week after week after week but we're going to condense it down and do like the intuitive thing okay cool go ahead uh, my name is Carolyn um, I also had never heard of Pasadena before mm-hmm. I've only been in Florida for a couple of years mm-hmm. and um, I've been interested in the tarot for several years and I've had a deck for a while and I just used the first one just for a little bit and then I just didn't understand what I was doing and then um, about a year ago, I decided that I was going to do it again. And I would just read for myself and for my mother, and it just sort of validated the way I was feeling. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I was reading into it what I wanted it to tell me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Jim here, he told me about this class just a couple of days ago, and I was like, yeah, let's go. Nice. So. December, I sort of got involved in looking at the world a little bit differently. And uh, then I met Carolyn, and uh, she brought the tarot cards in, and she's you know, talked about it a lot, and uh, did some readings on me, and it uh, kind of brought tears to my eyes. And I, I'm just <coughs> a real newbie. Okay. I, I tend to research things and overstudy things mm-hmm. and, and over intellectualize. So your idea of intuitive is attractive to me? Because mm-hmm. what I want to do is just memorize the book. <laughs> <laughs> I also wish I had When I pull a card, I, I want to you know, go to the book for the answer. Mm-hmm. No, no, you have to feel the card, look at the card, you know. Mm-hmm. Just don't be the card, you know. Right. So, uh, I was been working on it. I was looking at, uh, for my book, I had a notebook, and I, the way I did it was uh, I put tabs on the ends of the pages. I put all of these uh, scotch tape tabs and I wrote on the tabs and I was used to do readings and flip through the book and grab the tab and it would bring me to the right place, you know, and uh, I thought, this is crazy, I can't do this anymore, but, uh, and I gave up on them, like many people do, because it's so much memorizing and, uh, you know, Bethany, I have to, uh, you know, give you kudos for memorizing the book. That must have taken you a long time. I didn't, like, sit down and memorize it. I've done so many readings that mm-hmm. I remembered it. Okay, just by practice. Just by practice. So you've done a lot of readings then. Yes. Okay. I just, I, not that I want to charge, but I want it to be comfortable enough that I would feel okay charging people. Good. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Well, um, in Casa Vega, they don't believe in the tarot, uh, not the camp anyway. As far as I believe, that's true still. They'll sell the tarot cards at the bookstore, but they don't um, use them in their training. So uh, that's part of their religious practice. They don't do that. So when I uh, was training in Casa Vega, we were never allowed to use tarot cards. We just learned naturally uh, by what came into our head, what we felt. So this is kind of an extension of that. When I worked at the Casadega Hotel, 
I worked with many readers. They all used the tarot cards. They kept saying, Peter, you're using too much of your own energy. You have to use the tarot cards. And I was just like, nah, it's not for me. And uh, eventually, um, when I came out of the psychic closet, let's say, and started telling my family and relatives that, hey, I'm working on the weekends at the Casadega Hotel as an extra job, and I'm doing these sessions, you know, they were like, okay, oh, yeah, okay, sure, do a reading for me, prove it. You know, I had a lot of family that didn't believe in this kind of stuff. So um, I started reading my siblings and other relatives and noticed that the cards were coming out right, you know, uh, based on the book. So um, after a while, I started developing my own meanings for the cards. I took the base meanings and then I created my own meanings. And what is, and it always works because this is what happens. We are all interconnected, right? We all come from the Big Bang. We're all part of this universe. We all live on the planet Earth. We're all spiritual beings. We all have a spirit and a soul, if that's what you believe. I do. And so we're all interconnected. Think of it as um, the universe is as like the human body. We're all cells within that body, right? So we're all interconnected in some way. So if the universe... So here's the fool. There'll be the textbook answer to what the fool means. But Peter has his own connection of what the fool means. And the universe knows that since we're all connected. That's how synchronicity happens. You get two spirits. They come together at the supermarket. They exchange information. They part ways. Or they go on to do something else in the future. So the universe knows what Peter's meanings are. And if Jim is here for a reading with me, and I start shuffling the cards, they're going to go in the correct order for Jim based on what's in my brain. So, in other words, we could take the book and heave it and be done with it. And you don't have to have the book, because as long as you have your own memory, your own meanings, that is your psychic dictionary. That's the language that the universe is going to communicate through you, and uh, you're going to give the message. So the most important thing is that you have a concrete idea of what the meanings are in your head of each card. Now, if you're going to use the book, that's fine. The universe knows Peter's using the book. We'll give him the cards in this order based on his knowledge of the book. So this way, it's, it's very open-ended, and it, it makes it less scary that you have to remember these set definitions. And they were created uh, energetically. Um, I think uh, Aleister Crowley had something to do with them, other people. And uh, Ryder Waite, I think those are the artists, right? Is that right? She's nodding, so I'm going with her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have some knowledge. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Ryder Waite was the actual artist that um, right. composed it based on... temples, 
And uh, when the astronauts went into space in the 60s, it was very uh, interesting that they were receiving all of these symbols, that they would see the symbols out in space. And when they, and they drew them and they came, landed back down, they studied these symbols and they said, oh, this is all the same symbols that are on these temples and monuments throughout the world. So, again, it's the universe trying to communicate with us. Now they're looking at free energy and stuff and they're realizing that in the tetrahedron is a design for free energy. They're showing us how to evolve through these symbols. And a lot of the goddesses and goddesses were with slight variations of different cultures, but the god and goddesses symbols were uh, synchronistic as well throughout the planet. And people weren't hopping continents back then, you know. So um, there is a universal intelligence trying to guide us and, and uh, evolve this uh, civilization. So with all that in mind, um, we're going to go with uh, this approach and an intuitive approach. So the first card that we have here is the Fool. And I left a lot of room to take notes, okay? So, um, hmm. the best thing to do is uh, to look at the card, the Fool, and I see a lot of things in the Fool. Yeah, you probably want to get out your major arcanas and kind of get them in order maybe or just put them to the side. I should have just uh, used my projector and projected them on the wall. That would have been a lot easier. Next time we'll do the projector. But anyway, the fool, this is the card right, this is just going to slow us down I think, but anyway. The fool. Everybody see the fool? Mm -hmm. Fool. There's the fool. Okay. Now what I see in the card, the fool, just intuitively looking at it without going through the meaning, I see this man who's very carefree. Mm -hmm. I see him with uh, a sack on a stick. The sun is out. He's on top of a mountain. He's standing on the edge of the mountain. He doesn't really seem to care. He has this little dog with him. He has a flower in his hand. He seems to be enjoying himself. He seems to be breathing in the air of the day, uh, just caring about what's going on at this moment today. So it looks like he's off on an adventure. It looks like he's very carefree, and that's pretty much uh, the, the meaning here is beginnings, innocence, spontaneity, a free spirit. So when I look at the fool, I think of someone who's very free-spirited, okay? And for me, when I look at the fool, I see this idea that People are calling him the fool because he's following his heart. He's not following the mind so much. He's following the heart. Did you ever have an idea and then some people, maybe family members or friends say, oh, that's silly. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? It's, it's very negative, you know, it tends to be. And, uh, you know, a lot of great inventors, explorers, Christopher Columbus, you know, they told him, the world is flat, how could it be round? They were, he was ridiculed, he was thrown in jail, he was almost hung, uh, guillotined and, uh, by hook or crook, somehow he got saved by Queen Isabella. She believed in him for some reason. So, the fool is a free-spirited person. Uh, I would also say a person who's idealistic who puts their ideas into action and motion and doesn't really care anything about what anyone else says. The fool is going to be the fool even if they, either he's called the fool, he's going to go out and do his heart's desire. 
So that is the pool. Now, when you look at this card, so there's many meanings here. I said he's free-spirited, he's an, uh, out on an adventure, he's here to fill his passions, he doesn't care what other people say about him. There's three or four different meanings. They're all similar, and that's when your intuitive side comes in. Your intuitive side, for me, when I put the card down, something in the picture might strike me more than the other parts of the picture. Uh, for example, in this one, I might see that um, he's on the edge of the cliff. And I might say to someone, I see you're, try you're doing your ideas and... But I, I see danger in this because you're on the edge of the cliff. You know, you're pushing it to the limit here. Um, you got no money, you got no this, you know, you still have the desire, but I don't, you know, you're at the edge of the cliff with this. You need to step back maybe, collect up, use some of the mind instead of the heart, collect up some of these thoughts, and then continue to be the fool and move forward with your idealistic ideas. So. Um, it can mean a lot of things. So basically, why I left space here is for you to examine each card and write your meanings. You're going to memorize your meanings. Whatever first comes to your head, that's what you should write for the fool. Use the base meaning, what the tarot book says, but when you look at the card, you might feel something totally different, and that's okay. It may be a meaning that doesn't even agree with the book, but that's okay because it's your meaning, and the universe is going to know what your meaning is. Okay? So that's the fool. And those meanings change over time? When they you change a card next week, it has a different meaning. It it for, me, it for me, it usually has the same base meaning, but different things can move out, and my idea about what the fool represents for this particular person can vary, right or left, you know, so many degrees. And I might say something totally different. I, I find myself in my readings, you know, looking at a card and then um, going, no, that doesn't pertain to this person this pertains to that person, and I'll say this in my head, and then give the message. So, um, we are going to do readings tonight, okay? We're going to do, we need to practice it, so we are going to uh, do that. The next one is the magician, and without me even looking at the meaning, I don't know what the meaning says, but to me, the meaning of the magician is someone who's resourceful, he's mystical, He's magical, he's intuitive, he's um, generally a leader of people. Um, so this could be uh, someone who's uh, a minister, a preacher, um, someone who everything goes right for in business. It could be a psychic, it could be uh, many things like that. It could be a medicine man. Uh, let's see what the magician says. Power, skill, concentration, action, resourcefulness. So yeah, he's a, a resourceful character. And when I get female clients, if they get the magician, that's okay. Even though he's a male archetype, males and females have many different uh, aspects. Of, I have female attributes. Some females have male attributes. We all have them. So, uh, the magician tends to be more of a male uh, attribute, okay? Same with the fool. He's adventurous. He's not afraid to go out and be in the wilderness or whatever that is. Now, here's the high priestess. She's very similar to the magician, except she's the female energy. She's intuitive. She can be metaphysical. She can be uh, all of those things. So it says intuitive, high powers, mystery, a subconscious mind. Okay? With um, the high priestess, she tends to be intuitive but more emotional. Uh, she has the tarot, the book, the tarot book sitting on her lap. Okay? 
So more than likely, she's a tarot reader. She's someone that uses her intuition. She's probably someone that, um, if you were to meet her at a party, she would probably get a good intuitive feeling for you as a person. She would uh, be someone who just kind of knows if uh, the energy jives or, or not. So she would be intuitive. Uh, if you met her at a party, she would instantly know if she likes you or not based on your energy or how you feel. A lot of us do that. When we go into a room, we kind of decide whether we like this person or not. Even if we don't have too much information about them, we read them. We all do that. What about the black and white columns? Oh, the black and white columns, exactly. This could mean, um, you know, a difference of opinion. It could be right and left. It could be, uh, so exactly, if the white, black and white columns appeal to you, um, you can write something about that in your meeting. And, uh, you know, she battles over good and evil. She's uh, a mediator. You could you know, do a lot of things with the columns themselves, exactly. So, and she does have a crystal on top of her head, meaning higher knowledge, higher consciousness. So you could, you know, do something with the crystal. She kind of has a crystal ball on her head. So very similar to the magician. What do you think about the B and the J? I don't know what those uh, letters symbolize. I really don't. They could be... Um, in uh, it could be uh, Latin, I don't know, but I have no idea what the B and J are. They're just there. <laughs> so for me, I don't pay attention to them. Sometimes I pay attention to the towers. The book doesn't say anything about um, the B and the J, so you can have your own meaning for that. <coughs> The other thing that I didn't speak about is uh, reverse. So if you look at um, the reverse of the high priestess, it usually goes negative if it's a positive card. Uh, Has a hidden agenda, needs to listen to inner voice, so she's not listening to her intuitive side. For me, I don't do upside-down cards. For me, the upside-down card means to a lesser degree. So if if you know, if I got the the high priestess for every woman that walked in, and whether it was up or down, I would say you're somewhat intuitive. You know, if I got it up and I seen a lot of other intuitive cards, I would probably talk to that person about their intuitive self. Uh, maybe they should become a psychic reader themselves, or they need to do something intuitive in their life. So. Um, the upside down cards is up to you. You don't have to do opposites for upside down cards. I don't. I just say, when I see the tower card, the tower is chaos. You know, is it total chaos? Is it somewhat chaos? So, um, for me, I, I tend to be more different than most people. Most people, upside down is opposite. But I don't do that. I just use it to the, 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 the degree of, uh, and the universe knows that's what's in my mind. There's plenty of other cards to uh, give probably any situation, okay? So that's up to you whether you want to re- do reverse or lesser degree. Yeah, but if you do like the Celtic cross or something like that, mm-hmm. if there's at one point where you lay a card across. Yes. And so how do you know whether or not that card is reversed? You don't. The the one across and the second part is, um, the first part is the situation, the one across is what lies over the situation. So it's what lies, so like let's say um, the situation is chaos, okay, the tower. And then what lies over this uh, situation is the counselor card. I would tell that person they need to go counseling. (laughs) <laughs> okay, if they're not already in counseling, because a lot of times that'll happen, I'll get the counselor card, and I have my own, that's not a hard arcana, but there is a card in the deck, when I see that, I see the counselor card, okay, 
So that's to see it. And it, so now, let's say money came, uh, pentacles, those are generally money, has to do with uh, uh, your finances, it could be your career, how you generate and create abundance in your life. So if I saw the money card and then crossed over that, I saw uh, the counselor card, I would say you need to go talk to your investment banker or you need some financial advice, okay? Or you need to go talk to your 401k administrator at work because you're going to lose all your money and your investments. Or So depending on what lies over, you know, you, you can see how you would get all these different meanings to a card. Uh, the emperor, he's um, an authority, a father figure, structure, solid foundation. Uh, the emperor could be your dad. The emperor could be your boss, someone who's in authority, someone people go to to uh, get advice, get direction. So the emperor tends to be a president of a company, a CEO, your manager at work, your father, um, could even be a female. There's a lot of females that are head of the household, right? They call the shots. So the emperor could be your mother if she's always taken on that role of being the go-to person, being the head of the family. Okay? So it doesn't have to be a male person. The emperor tends to be someone who could be the president of the United States. He's the emperor, for example. But we can elect a female as president, and she would be the emperor. Right? Okay. I did? Yes. You went, because you went from oh, okay. The empress is very similar to the high priestess, but the empress, she does everything with love. That's my meaning. Uh, I see hearts all over her gown. I see a heart uh, sitting at the base of the chair. I see um, a scepter. She has a scepter. So she wields all of her intentions are with love connected to them. So she's someone who's a doer, but what I feel, let's see what it says. Fertility, femininity, beauty, nature, abundance. That could be your meaning. My meaning is a female energy that does things uh, for the right reasons. She does them out of love. She's very... Um, unselfish, nurturing. Yeah, she's that kind of archetype. Where the high priestess, she's more like the emperor. She's someone you go to for advice and spiritual guidance, but she's more um, out of the emotional, more into the intellectual. So, I mean, that's just me. You can do your own meanings. So, basically, use this as a guideline. Write notes. Like I said, I'll bring binders, and we'll, I have a hole punch, we'll punch the holes, and you can use this as your reference. And I don't know if everyone was here when I said this, but in the back is a picture of all the cards. So you don't have to go through your decks, you can just look. And they're not in order, sorry. But um, what I was saying is, a good thing to do would be to cut these out with scissors, and use... Uh, you know, that uh, school glue or whatever they glue stick and put it next to the meanings. So I left space that you can stick them around. So you want this to be your tarot book. You want this to be your dictionary. When I was uh, in Casadega, one of the instructors taught us, you know, how to build our own dictionary. Uh, he didn't quite explain that's what we were doing, but that's exactly what we were doing. We didn't read with cards then, and we would have people come from the public, and they would have a student's night where we would read people for free, or I think it was $5. And I remember a woman coming, and I use this a lot in some of my classes, but I remember a woman coming, and I kept seeing all these apples in my head. So it's like a tarot card, it's symbology. Uh, I kept seeing these apples. And I said, uh, does your family have an apple orchard? You love apples? What 
what's with the apples? She kept saying, I don't know what you're talking about. No, no, no. So I started getting a little nervous, you know, oh my God, I'm screwing this up. And uh, my teacher saw he would come around behind us and check on everybody. He saw that I was having trouble with the apples. And he just said, look, calm down. Um, you see an apple in your mind. I said, yes. He said, just put everything aside and think of what does an apple mean to you here? And I said, oh, an apple, yeah, that's easy. Uh, apple means school teacher. You stick an apple on the teacher's desk. That's exactly what that woman was, a school teacher. So now whenever I see apple, in, if I do a reading, I know that they're some kind of a teacher. And so this is the way the universe communicates with us. It knows Peter whenever he sees the image apple in his mind. It's going to convey school teacher, some kind of a teacher. And that's my dictionary. So um, the cards are the symbology. What appears in your mind can be symbology. So as you read, things will start to develop even more than the cards. You'll start to get other intuitive information. Like sometimes I'll see a baby in my head. And I'll say, oh, you're having a baby. It's a boy. Or um, like a lot of times I see deceased loved ones and it'll be your grandfather's here and then the grandfather will show me a baby boy and I'll say, your grandfather wants to congratulate you on having your baby boy. He's in spirit. He's aware that you gave birth to this child. And people will be like, that's right. You know, I had the child a year after he passed or whatever it was. So this is the way that we start building. So the tower is a really excellent way to start building the symbology and the physical, and then you'll start seeing pictures in your mind as you read more and more. And then you can create another book with, when I see an apple in my head, it means teacher. When I see uh, a flag, it means this. When I see a that, it means that. And the more that you communicate with the, it's like uh, developing a language. The more that you interact with the universe, the more that you practice, the more that you communicate, the more information passes, uh, the more tools you have to uh, do a reading for someone. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay, good. You can also add your own experiences, things that you want to talk about. The Hierophant. When I see the Hierophant, I always think of a mediator because I see this, it looks like a woman and there's two men in front of her. She's holding up her hands almost as if they're on opposite sides of each other. And I see kind of like this person who's mediating, trying to get these two people to cooperate. That's what I see. And that's the way I use it for the most part. Um, sometimes it can mean like court or uh, having to have a settlement. It has to do with settling a matter for me. Let's see what it says here. Religion, group identification, conformity, tradition, and beliefs. None of the meanings that I have. Okay? So that's my personal meaning. For you, it could mean clergy, like it says. It could mean religion, conformity, tradition, or beliefs. So if you saw that upside down and you're reading reverse, you might say, well, I see you leaving your old traditional beliefs. I see you, um, et cetera, et cetera. If you saw it right side up, you might say, well, I see you went back to the church. You were into prayer more. And that would be the traditional book meaning. My meaning would be, you know, I see that you're going through a mediation, something's being resolved with two parties, you had an accident, and the settlement's coming in, or whatever that might be. Okay? Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Robin, you look confused. Well, no, we were just noticing the two keys crossed on the card, and we were just kind of, you know, huh, okay. okay, what does that mean to you? What is doing this thing and talk to that's good. I think That's it's your meaning. Yeah. 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 There is a card for judgment, though, so right. you might 
might change that. Um, so right in the book, yeah. Right, write that in your book. Write that meaning in your book. That's your meaning. Does anybody have any other meaning? In my book, <laughs> okay. 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 it means um, moving. Moving. Is it keys moving? Yeah. Keys moving. Like moving, um, somebody could be moving to a new household. Oh, okay. Or moving on to a different so room. Keys could unlock a maybe whole new door. Mm-hmm. 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 So that's good. <laughs> so now if you were looking at that card, and one day the two men on either side could, could mean one thing. And then if the keys jumped out at you in that particular reading, you might focus more on the keys, the meaning of what the keys are. So each little obscure thing in the picture um, will mean something else to you. And if, if you, one strikes you more than the other, then you go with that. Okay? Well, it's like, um, <coughs> um, like the answer to something. Okay, that's for you now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when you the play key the court, situation, the, the, what, the, the key to the situation, situation that's for you. Yeah. So now you have that meaning. That's so write that in your book. Mm-hmm. That so you can d- dissect the card yeah. and say, well, the keys mean this. The two men mean that. The crown on her head means this. So whatever little, and as you start doing and practicing, more and more uh, intuitive meanings will come to you, and that's when you go to your book and keep filling in information, okay? Well, also, too, like, I don't know, it's just the way I think about it, but I've never done cards or anything like that, but Mm -hmm. if you, to me, the way you're explaining it, if you think about it, if you have the card this way and this sideways card, mm-hmm. it's almost like the bridge, the step that you need to take to get over the past the right up card. Okay. So I almost think of this card sideways as a bridge. Okay, that's what for you. What you need to do to cross over to get over what this card means. Good. And then, like, let's say you have one card, and then you flip the next card, and the next card, let's say the keys pop out, the keys will help you understand the previous card before and further explain that specific person's issue or what the, the answer. answer is. Okay. Right. That's so for like you. You can read. But it's almost like reading backwards. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you, to me, it's like you would have to read backwards okay. to better read and make yourself reassured that you are giving them positive and correct information that you would feel comfortable in, let's say, have paying someone to do reading. Mm-hmm. See how we're all getting vastly and somewhat different and somewhat agree. So um, this is the beauty of the tarot, that we take what we, and then this way we can let go of the book and let go of the meanings and expand on out of one card, you could probably have six different meanings depending on what jumps out at you. So and now you're actually expanding the deck by doing that. Right. Right, Penny? Mm-hmm. Nice. What were you saying, Oh, I was just going to say when I see this card, I see the, the two uh, guys at the, at the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obviously, they're identical. They have the same haircut, yeah. same, same bald spot. Yes. I know that they have significantly different shirts on, but they're really the same. Mm-hmm. And, and with the two keys, and particularly with the higher font having two, holding up two fingers, two keeps going in my yeah. mind saying, well, there are always you know, at least two choices, two sides to everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, we think there's a big difference in Robin likes that. She's writing that. But there's probably <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the card is telling me that you know, we think mm-hmm. that there's a lot of difference between the two sides, but there really isn't. Good. And the key is just to, you know, open up the door and go through. Oh, Pick yeah. the key, go through. Oh, yeah. That's, That's not really I mean. about the differences. They're really the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I meant by judgment, not legal judgment. Yeah. yeah. That's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. That's good. It, it kind of reminds me of the first Star Trek episode mm-hmm. where the, the two guys, one was black on one side, white on the other, the other was white on one side, black on the other. Mm-hmm. 
They thought they were completely different. They'd been at war with each other for a thousand years in space. And everybody else looked at them and said, you guys are just the same. Right. So, no, we're completely different. He's black on one side and I'm white on the other. You know, like, completely the same to us, looking at them. But they were embedded in the difference. Yes. That nobody else could see. Excellent. So that's your meaning. Thank you. Next is the lovers. And, um, geez, there's not that much to look into here. <laughs> it's love, a union, a relationship, values, alignment, and choices. Love is a choice, isn't it? You choose to be in love. You choose to take that risk, right? Um, so, it, it's exactly that to me. It's the lovers. Chariot, control, willpower, victory, assertion, determination. With the chariot, I see control. Even though he's not holding the reins of the chariot, I always see him holding the reins of the chariot. That's just my interpretation. I feel the person that's the chariot is in control of their life. They're steering their life in the direction that they want. They you know, have, they got it going on. That's what I say. Now, you also have the dark and the light characters. Um, they're half lion, half human, it looks like. So you have these two characters as well. You have the city in the background. There's a river separating the chariot from the lions, even though it sits, they, they sit in the front. Um, there's water there. His wheels are in the water. So that might mean something to someone. Seeing the wheels in the water. Um, the lions could mean something. we got the Star Trek thing going on too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice a lot of that uh, black and white stuff. The next is strength. <coughs> It doesn't take much for this card either. It's strength, courage, patience, control, compassion. The woman looks very compassionate toward the lion, doesn't she? She's nurturing, she's petting, she seems to be very compassionate toward him, very loving. So, um, So the reverse is weakness, self-doubt, lack of discipline. You know, everything opposite strength. And like I said, I don't use opposites, but if you do, that's good. Permit. Soul searching. Introspection. Being alone. Inner guidance. I totally don't even have this meaning. When I see the hermit, 
The first thing I usually see is him holding up the light. I see him with his staff. I see him welcoming, uh, showing people the way. He's a way shower for me. He shows them the light. This is the way. Come along. This is the way to go. So uh, when I see that card, I, I always uh, think of someone who's a way shower, someone who has a position where they train people, teach people. Uh, usually it's a uh, more of a spiritual card to me. The light is your spiritual light. Um, so, but the hermit can be reclusive as well. Sometimes I will say that meaning. You spend too much time at home. You don't get out enough. You this, you that. So uh, the hermit can be uh, reclusive for me as well. But uh, more than likely, it, it has to do with um, being a way shower for me. Okay? That's just me. Anyone else see anything in that that they want to share? I just hope like to. I didn't mm -hmm. I just hope like. Okay. So that would be a similar meaning for you. I just see it as a long, cold journey. Me too. But that, because there's so much blue and the white and the snow. <laughs> Although that person may feel alone on this, you know, journey, it, it is a safe one because it is well -known. Okay, I'm feeling very cold. I'm very cold. Well, it's because the hermit's sitting in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> The first time I pulled this card for myself, I was I was overwhelmed because I just saw myself in this card. I, I've been on a, on a lonely journey, seeking the truth, and I just was kind of overwhelmed. You know, I, I felt uh, alone, and I felt you know that I was just kind of like supporting myself with the staff and being all alone. I slipped down that rabbit hole pretty quickly. Being kind of So this was a tough one for me to pull on. versus being alone, loneliness, being alone, withdrawal, soul searching, you know, guidance. Right, they are almost the same. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. Who knows? You, you do. I <laughs> gave <laughs> 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 you the answer. No, I mean, don't, I, <laughs> oh, don't give me that. I'm going to be a That's the meaning of the book, you know, I don't know. Oh, the book. I read that the book. That's what I do. Searching and my my hermit lifestyle, I felt that well maybe I'm just you know screwing myself and being you know, self you know. Mm -hmm. Well then you got to find the reason. Destructive. The reasoning is why you're doing it. I have friends. 
good, because I did. I, yeah, well, that's the, the conclusion the I came the to. The first second you said that reminded me of one of my friends who was completely in only to herself, very quiet, very, didn't have anything. You would say, what is she like? You would not know, because you can know her 10 years and not know what she is into. Like, you're into poverty. This person likes the beach. You know, she, she just was so closed and quiet that she was doing it for a reason, and she had to find out what that reason was. So she was specifically doing it on purpose. She knew she was doing it, she just couldn't face getting over the reason why she was doing it. Whether it's, like, not wanting to, to open yourself up because of something that happened to you in the past or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like uh, the reverse is the feelings of those, and, and the upfront is actually being in that condition. So I feel lonely, I feel withdrawn, I feel isolated. And the other one is actually being alone in the physical. I want to go and Mm -hmm. think. Self-introspection. Okay, good. I'm glad that we're talking and throwing some ideas out there. And this could be a little tedious. A little boring. It's not like the normal workshop, but you know what? You have to learn, right? You got to do it. You got to go through it. Justice. This is the justice card. Oh, we skipped Will of Fortune. No, we did that. No, we did. Okay. Yeah, I said it, it means for me it means luck. And upside down, it means less luck, a lesser degree of good fortune, good karma. But sometimes upside down, it can be be bad luck. A little voice will whisper in my ear or uh, some, I get a gut feeling that it means bad luck in this case. So you could have many meanings for the cards. I saw it as a compass. That could be for, yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's yeah. Write your notes. Hmm. Get your pen. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I bossed her around. I'm done. <laughs> okay, so justice is just what it says. Justice, fairness, truth, cause and effect, law. When I see this, depending on what cards are around, I might say, you have a, there's something pending legally. Um, so it could mean law. It could mean there's a court case. Um, I also see the scales of balance. It could mean balancing. Um, you see the sword, you know, the sword strikes you, it means probably that justice is going to take you down. <laughs> you know? So you're going to lose that court case if the sword pops out at you. Um, if you see the balance, uh, that's another thing. Um, so it all depends. But it does mean justice, um, fairness, truth. You know, I've seen this card many times in people's work situations. It, 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 it has to do with Receiving justice at work. (coughs) Receiving, um, it could also be receiving recognition at work. It could be receiving justice as far as the law is concerned. You have a lawsuit. You're having a divorce. Various things where you have to actually go down to the courthouse. So it could be justice in many different areas. Not just at the courthouse. I have a quick question. Sure. While you're doing a reading for someone, do you ask them questions or do you tell them? I tell them. Do you say you're something's going on with the court, or do you say is there something going on in the legal aspect? Uh, yeah, like that. You so you, you kind of ask them. Kind of ask. Okay. Right. Because like I'll see things and I don't really know how to if I don't like feel it. Mm-hmm. But again, with my book going down the definitions, I'm like, should I? tell them it's going to happen, or should I ask if I'm even close? Usually what I do when I do a session is I'll do like a five-minute, ten-minute tarot spread, and I'll tell them I don't want to know anything. Mm -hmm. And then I'll start talking about what I see in the tarot. Then when I'm all done, I'll say, do you have any questions about what I said? Usually I don't get any input the first five or ten minutes. Do you have any questions about what I said? you understand how this pertains to your life? And some people say, oh yes, I totally understand. And then you go, okay, do you 
you have any other questions besides what I've been revealed, what has been shown to you? And they'll say, yes, I want to know about my brother, or I want to know about this, I want to know about my marriage, I want to know... So sometimes um, the tarot spread won't give you all the things going on in their life in one spread. As I'm going to show you the, the Celtic Cross next week and how to read all those positions. And um, if you go by that, the, the card in position one is the situation. So usually the entire reading pertains to that situation. Now this person may have five, six, ten different other situations in their life that you have to, uh, you know, go into. And a lot of times uh, I'll build on what I see here and I'll start getting symbols in my, I'm very visual, so I'm uh, clairvoyant. And I see visual things, almost like tower cards. Sometimes I see a movie in my head and I actually see people in their life, in a movie, and uh, I talk about those people. Usually it's a spirit that shows me the movie a lot of times. Like, I'll see Grandma, and then she'll show me, I lived in a two-story white house, I lived in Ohio, uh, when you walk up the staircase, there's a grandfather clock on the landing, and there's an above-ground pool in the backyard. And then I'll tell that person, I see this older woman, she shows me this, she shows me this, she shows me that. And then sometimes uh, they show me things, like a tarot card, and I'll say, do you have a brother? Because she wants to tell me, she wants to acknowledge your brother. And then I'll see a fire hydrant or a fire hose, and I'll say, is your brother um, a firefighter? She wants to acknowledge him, she wants you to say hi to him. Etc. Et so it gets intertwined and it starts building, and that's why we're going to do readings in this class. We're going to start reading each other. Practice is the best way, and you know I'll help you through it, and uh, it'll work out. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Cool. Um, sometimes, okay. Sometimes when I do the spread, I'll ask if I'm not too sure what it means. It's okay to ask them. Uh, if I saw the Justice card, I'll say, um, are you having something going on with court? They might say no to me. I'm not perfect. I'm, you know, but they might say, no, nothing going to court. And I'll say, you feel like you're being treated fairly at work or something, and, and it will find the meaning. You know, sometimes it's not perfect. You have to ask questions. So yes, you can ask questions. Generally, I try to get through the whole thing without them saying anything. And I basically what I do is I start with a prayer. That's important, something that I didn't speak about yet that I was going to, but we start with a prayer. We bless the cards. We protect the cards. We ask the angels to surround them, at least I do. I ask for the white light to come into the cards, and we make it a sacred ceremony by doing prayer. Then after we do the prayer, um, then I start, you know, doing doing the reading. And yes, I might have questions. Okay, so now. I have a question. So, I mean, I don't think I'm psychic. I don't believe that I'm psychic. Oh, you have to if you're here. But so by reading the cards, am I reading? Or am I reading? Am I coming up with it myself? Or so, you tell me. or would that make me psychic if, if I'm coming yes. up with it myself? Or okay, I'm gonna prove. Yes. Okay. Intuition. All right, I'm gonna prove that we're all psychic. Okay. There's many, many things that we do on a daily basis that is intuitive or psychic. Both are the same word to me. They're the same thing. If you're on a line in a store and you don't hear anybody behind you, don't you feel that person behind you? Yeah. Sometimes in the store, you want more space. You don't care for this person's energy. <coughs> Intuitively, they might look good, they might be dressed wonderfully, but something about them, you need more space, right? Other people, 
They could be dressed dingy, uh, whatever it is. You might have physical eye judgments with that person, but their energy feels good. You strike up a conversation with them. You don't mind being two feet apart from them. So what is that? Psychic. <laughs> it's intuitive. So uh, we're doing intuitive things all the time. We go to a party. We meet some people. For some reason, you just don't care for that person. You don't want to go near them. You don't want to talk to them. Other people, yeah, talk to them. You know? So um, that's your psychic. That's your intuitive. And I can probably give hundreds of examples of how we're intuitive on a daily basis. You pick up the phone. You hear somebody's voice. It has a certain energy to it. I don't like that person. I don't, I don't want to talk to them. I'm going to hang up. They're a solicitor. And then some solicitors you listen to, right? Seem like, yeah, for, for whatever reason, you know, I'm talking to this person because it feels like, feel, they feel good. I feel like I want to talk to them, you know, for whatever reason. I, I do that on a daily basis when I pick up the phone. So um, that's psychic. That's intuitive. So we are all psychic. The whole planet. There's somebody at, at work, and every time I see this person, I swear, it's like an, an invisible board <laughs> hits mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And I just like, well, I, just, I don't like this person at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I don't know this person. Mm-hmm. But I just don't want to be anywhere near this person mm-hmm. because it's just weird. Have you ever had a conversation with them? A little, you know. Yeah, like two hi. Words. Hi, I want two words, and then I and then I want out. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. Mm-hmm. But it's just so it's such a strong feeling that yeah, I just can't I just can't not deny it. Some people you go by them and you think they're a mass murderer. <laughs> 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 Good looks, 
loving parents, opportunity, education, this, this, that, the list goes on and on. You're handsome, you're this, no disease, you're going to live till 99. And someone else is uh, born a paraplegic, quadriplegic, disease, famine, uh, on, on being unloved. So you're describing Stephen Hawking, except for the unloved part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> that's not, not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. No, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it could be a bad thing um, if you had parents that were un- ununderstanding about it and just shoved you in the basement and you know did whatever. There's a lot of horrible things that go on. So, um, I came to the conclusion that we choose our parents based on our journey. Like, um, and the Christians taught me, um, Catholic, we all had a cross to bear. We all came here with a cross, just like Jesus, a cross. And I believe that we have a cross. We have several. And I feel that it's uh, our journey based on what we're here to learn. I feel like we choose it. Rather than stick you in a random body, having her hell pass or fail, we choose our situation. If we're going to be judged in the end, I would like to have some say about what situation I get put in, right? You know? So um, that's why I believe in reincarnation. Plus, personally, I've had uh, reincarnation experiences. I'm not here to convert you or change your mm-hmm. mind, but... Um, well, I it's just, an interesting uh, idea. You know, mm-hmm. I've done, had past life regression done on the Mm-hmm. Couldn't get beyond you know, five or six years old for myself. That's great. Right, right. There's something that is appealing to me, but my intellectual side says that's just man's reaction to the despair of the inevitability of death. It's mm-hmm. like, crap, we put all this you know, effort into it, and we just die, and that's it. Like Stephen Hawking says, you just turn the light switch off, mm-hmm. the electrons go away, and we don't that's exist anymore. That's and that's right. such a despairing thought to most of us. Right, we put right. all this energy. Yeah. So the idea of oh, past lives and ten thousand past lives and ten thousand future lives also look at immortality. Yeah, but well, that's a kind of an easy way out. Well, yeah. energy. <laughs> for, I'm sorry, even that is incorrect because the, the fact is matter never dies. Dies. It transforms. Like it, it changes right. constantly. Sure. There's no, you cannot. If you removed one atom of energy, the whole world would collapse. It's like the, everything. There's no. You can't do that. So. Uh, they actually have measured uh, the energy that leaves the body when someone dies. There's mm-hmm. actual... Uh, yeah, the energy that leaves. They one and a half have, pounds. <laughs> I guess. They yeah. actually one have measured the yeah, what you would call yeah. your soul that, that leaves yeah. that, um, that's accounted for repeatedly. So it's not like this happened just one magical time. Um, and again, not to convert you, um, I don't think that anyone actually personally experience something that would cause them to feel differently. I think most people do have like a, a wish of it and they think intellectually or whatever. However, like he has had, I've had um, my own uh, experience in the fact that when I was uh, like three, six months old, I know what it's like to not be in this dimension mm-hmm. and to be in the other dimension. That's kind of like how my past are. So I have never been convinced that there's nothing when we're dead because I recall what that kind of is like. Mm-hmm. Although you kind of have to experience it. Yeah. And I've had a situation where someone um, who was like a, re- a relative of a uh, past person in my life. I connected with this person really well. We got along great. Um, he was married and had a daughter. And uh, I, girl, I love to pieces. Would I ever consider, had he been single, uh, dating this man? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was so no. not my type of, of person. But you connected. But we had 
It could be um, the end of something and the beginning of, of uh, a new. It could be change, transformation, transition. It's definitely a card of ending, which can also be physical death. And sometimes I'll say to people that someone just died. Or is someone sick, going to die? I see the death in the future. Sometimes I see the death in the future and I say, you're going to change jobs. You're going, it's going to be the end of this career. You're moving into a new career. So it could be physical death. It could be the end of anything. And based on what other cards you see in the spread, it's going to determine, help nudge you toward the right interpretation. Okay? I want to try and get through all these and then we'll go on break. How are we doing on time, by the way? 8.43. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think we're going bad on time. That's my interpretation. The next card is temperance, because we're all going to read each other, too. I want to get that done at least. Temperance. Uh, balance, moderation, patience, purpose, meaning. When I see this, I always think of balance. Um, I see one foot in the water, one foot on land. I see her balancing the cups. I see the wings. I see the halo. I see a bright light in the background that I never quite noticed before. And if there's a trail, and there's a journey at the end, it's almost like the light at the end of the tunnel. So you could see that and take that meaning. There's several meanings that you can get, but it's a lot of balance. Sometimes I'll say to people, uh, you're balancing the physical world and the spiritual world because there's one foot on the land and one foot in the water. Okay? Another difficult... One thing I noticed earlier was <clears throat> the water is uh, you know, not flowing naturally. Mm -hmm. It's at an angle. So there's oh, it's at an angle. Water, you can't pour water like that. It's like defined. Oh, like oh, the, the water in the cups. Yeah, going from one cup to the other. You could do it. No, it wouldn't flow. You like could do it that. fast. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, the water <laughs> <laughs> Then it's a toss. It's not a pour. Right on. Pour, pour would go down. So this is right. like saying transferring from one to the other sometimes is a spiritual quality. That's good. Yeah, if it's not earthly, something that has no <laughs> to it. That's good. I like that. So that's your take on it. So you, you're not always bound by what we think is the truth. Nice. Like you're that's pretty deep. You're stepping into water, but you're not, your foot isn't going in it. Yeah. You're stepping on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Defying what's natural. Okay. So you want to take a little, if you're really serious about learning the tower, you want to take a little time past this class and just kind of go through it, meditate on it, get your own meanings, and then when you come back next week, if you're going to come, you'll get more out of it and we'll just keep building on this. I think three, we'll be able to get all this done in three classes. I really think that we will. Um, and start looking at the other, the minor arcanas on your own and, and looking at the meanings um, you can Google it online and you'll get the, the meanings as well. And with the deck comes a little book. It's a little pamphlet that comes with the deck and it gives you all the original meanings. The devil's a rough one too. Bondage, addiction, sexuality, materialism. I never got sexuality with the devil, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. I usually get bondage, addiction. A lot of times I see the, the couple, they're chained together. You see that? I always, um, a lot of times, many times I feel like two people that are bound together, but they're not really supposed to be together anymore. They're settling karma between each other. Or they're so used to each other that they're mentally, emotionally dependent upon each other, but it's not a relationship in their highest best. Yeah, because they're not really bound together, they're bound to the same thing. Yeah, so it could be an addiction, there might be drug abuse, there might be... So it's um, like a codependency. Yeah, like a codependency type thing. They might be married to each other, but 
each one makes a good salary, and if they were to leave, they would lose the income, and they like trap, you know, it's whatever. It's usually together, but you know, bad things, things that we deem bad spiritually, tend to be good things as well because it's part of our journey. We're here to learn. We're here to be with that person for a certain amount of time, and then when that time runs out, it's time to go. So sometimes I'll tell people, uh, well, you're settling karma, and I see you're working out a lot of things right now. Other times I'll be like, you're bound to this person, you're addicted, but you need to let go. And I don't like telling people what to do. I'm not generally that forward with people. Uh, I'll tell them, you do whatever you want, but I'm just giving you this advice. You know? So that's an important thing. Not to say, you need to, you should, you have to, um, you know, any of those for sure certain things are not nice to say to people. Avoid saying absolute certainties to people. I tell people, you might want to think about going back to college because I see your career coming to an end. I don't say, you need to go back to college. No. You know. You might want to think about this. I see this. I feel that. And let them come up with their own um, answers. Unless they really press you for it, then I'll just say, well, look, at, you need to just do this. You know? A lot of people say, I see this, that you have free will. Yeah. And it's your choice. Exactly. I always start a reading with, um, the prayer is, Dear God, universe, we ask you for knowledge and wisdom. And if there are any spirits here with us today, we only want to receive those that come from your light. May I be a vessel for so-and-so in their highest and best form. Amen. So we're asking for protection. We're asking for truth coming from the light. And um, that I be a vessel for them in, the, in, in their highest form best form. So, you know, you, you always want to make a prayer or some kind of a saying to um, make it a sacred thing. In the state of Florida, uh, I don't think you're allowed to use psychics. Mm, there's something, of, oh, if you're a psychic, you're supposed to get an entertainment license. And when you do a psychic reading, you're supposed to tell them this is for entertainment purposes only. And you go out to the county and you get an entertainment license. That's the Florida State law. Uh, since I'm a pastor, or a reverend, the medicine man, all of those things, I'm giving spiritual advice. And I'm using these as a media to do so. So you're either going to go one way or the other if you're going to do this professionally. Either you're doing it for entertainment purposes or you're making it a sacred ceremony and it's protected by religious freedom or whatever, spiritual advice. So that's just something I throw in there. Uh, okay, the next, so the devil's a rough one. People don't like seeing that card, so uh, the tower is another one people don't like to see, but it's, you know, what more can you say about the tower? The building's on fire, people are jumping out. It looks like mayhem, upheaval, change, chaos, disaster. So this pretty much is the way you'll probably read that one. The star. Uh, hope, spirituality, renewal, inspiration, serenity. And I generally read it as that. Um, I see a lot of times a healing or a cleansing. Those are my tend to use words with this. I see uh, cleansing. Usually someone's gotten out of a bad situation and they're healing and cleansing from it. Uh, that's what I get. There's a lot of other things going on there. There's a tree with a bird on it. There's stars. There's the water. She's pouring water out on the land and water out into the pond. If you'll notice, she has two pitchers of water. So, get, with, get the meaning for yourself. It's usually an uplifting card. She's so completely exposed. I mean, just nothing. Not a necklace, not a flower. Exactly. Nothing. Mm -hmm. nothing, uh, nothing in the other cards even remotely. She's a hippie chick. 
you would at least have flowers. <laughs> Uh, all right, the moon. The moon tends to be a female energy. The moon is, in a lot of traditions, is a female energy. Um, so you might go with the female energy. We have the two dogs barking on the opposite sides of. Uh, but the the a sun is out and a moon at the same time. You got the two towers of separate separateness. Uh, duality I see here, duality with the dogs, I see rough waves here, things are churning up, things are going on, I see a path leaving the water, going on to land and back into the water, yet the water is rough, uh, <coughs> so it looks like a path leaving, leading out of the calm waters over land back into rough waters, so the moon... Um, is illusion, fear, anxiety, insecurity, subconsciousness. Um, I see duality here. I see a lot of duality here. So is there a scorpion at the bottom? Yeah, there is. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a scorpion. Is that a scorpion? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It could be a lobster. Yeah. 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 Could be a crayfish. Could be a scorpion. Looks, looks more like a lobster. Yeah, that's a lobster. It's a lobster. It's a lobster. Whatever it means to you, that's the idea. The sun is a beautiful card. I love it. It's fun. I have something to add. Go ahead. Um, well, I'm into animals, marine biology, is what I'm majoring. Um, wolves stay in packs. Um, towers are like, you know, there's a village, a town, a lot of people, multiple people, and uh, lobsters migrate. So, that, that just came to me. I don't know if that means anything. For you, it could be but migration. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Is that one dog and then a fox? To me, they look like this. Like 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 yeah, one's yeah, a puppy and yeah, one's more like a wolf. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh yeah, one has a thicker so tail. So one is and one is domestic. Yeah. Could be. One is being stranded. Maybe Jim. Good observation, Jim. I never noticed the tail. Oh, Ten years of college, not wasted. <laughs> <laughs> the sun is. Some years I remember. <laughs> the sun is fun, warmth, success, positiveness, vitality. can't argue with that card. Sometimes, um, to me, when I see the sun, I think of a baby, a child being born. So, I think of uninhibited. And I think of warm, you know, pleasant things. So, sometimes, uh, if I, this child strikes me, I, I might talk about, you know, are you having a child right now? That's a possibility for me. The next one is judgment. Wow. Is there any relationship between the cards? For example, you know, the sun has, has the baby unadorned and the star has the woman unadorned. Is that the same person years later? I don't know. The sun, the beginning, the star, mm -hmm. the evening, the, the twilight? I, interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, very mental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got Both of them, you know, went through life, <laughs> never <laughs> having an outfit. <laughs> Never having gotten to Talbots. <laughs> and no Jimmy Choo's or anything. You know? right. ah. So the sun is an uplifting. There's a horse there. I like um, that the baby's throwing off the blanket. No, that's no, like a flag. It's a flag. Is it a flag? Yeah, yeah he's holding a flag. A banner. Yeah. It's like a blanket. Like, yeah. He's mm -hmm. holding a flag. It is a pole. Yeah. It is a flag. Yeah, it's a banner. It could be a victory as well. Yeah. I do. It's up by the sun. Yeah. I never noticed that there was a pole attached to that. I always thought the baby was flinging the blanket off. Being so, you know, we all see different things. Mm -hmm. 
there, the child looks uh, happy and open and joyful. And the woman, in the, I keep going back to the scholar, she looks just pensive and contemplative. The next is uh, judgment. <coughs> it's uh, judgment, rebirth, inner calling, absolution. <coughs> In uh, my old Catholic upbringing, um, they would say that the, um, and this comes from that actually, the, the angel blows the trumpet and people wake up from the graves, right? We heard about that in our dogma. And um, I always see people turning on a new leaf, um, waking up to the reality of a situation, waking up. It's definitely a call to wake up of consciousness for me. Um, and there's a um, red cross, you know, that's healing as well. So you have the angel blowing a trumpet. It's some kind of a wake-up call. Everyone's awakening, even though they're popping out of graves. So it could be a rebirth, an inner calling, judgment, absolution, being forgiven. Um, that definitely comes from... Uh, Christianity, that part. Finally, the world. Completion, interrogation, accomplishment, and travel. I always see travel with this more than anything. I see um, like the whole world being in front of you. I see... Um, There's a lot of people here, too. I see a man. I see a kind of eagle-looking, a bull, a lion. It's a very worldly card. And uh, take it. It could be travel. I'm going to travel the world. It could be uh, freedom, a completion, accomplishment. So... Um, you know, take your own meaning out of that, write your notes, and now the universe knows exactly what's in your head. And when you do a reading, go with the meanings that stick in your head. You don't need a book. If you want to use the book to make you feel comfortable, use the book. The universe will know you want to use the book. However you do it. Uh, and to have the basic knowledge is a good thing. Okay? Is everybody comfortable with what we did here? Yeah? Okay, good. All right. Wow. So take it home and do what you can. I want to um, start reading. The next thing I included here was the suits, and I'm just going to go over that like really super quick. The cups represent the element of water, the cups deal with emotions, consciousness, love, feelings, relationships, connections. For me, the cups are about knowledge, wisdom, um, they're, they could be, yes, emotional, relationships, feelings. So, whenever you think of the cups, some of you that are into astrology, think of a water sign. Uh, think of emotions, love, feelings. Um, I always see also higher knowledge. I see knowledge in that. It doesn't say that here, but I see a lot of times in cups, I see knowledge. The suit of pentacles, pretty easy. It's about money. It's about man manifesting on a physical level, finances, work, creativity. It's about abundance, money. And I'm not going to go through all these and read the whole thing. Just kind of take it with you and read it on your own. The swords, to me, are physical things as well. Being motivated, being... Uh, enthusiastic about things. Swords are action. When I see somebody with a sword, they're doing some kind of action, right? 
you're not holding a sword for any reason whatsoever. Usually it's about adversaries, fighting, um, wanting your way. That's my opinion. What it says here is deals with mental level of consciousness centered around mind and intellect. Swords mirror the quality of mind presence of your thoughts, attitudes, beliefs. Swords are double-edged, though. They symbolize a fine balance between intellect and power and how the two elements can be used for good or evil. That's what it says. For me, swords are action. Someone's taking action about something. But that's just me. Wands have to do with spirituality, inspiration, determination, strength, intuition, creativity, ambition. So, uh, wands to me is a witch carries a wand, right? She's a manifester. She weighs her wand, puts, she brings things into existence. So, for me, wands are manifesting things in your life using your intellect to create something, uh, using your ambition. Wands, to me, are those things. But my suits and the way that this reads are totally different in a lot of ways. The first two are similar, but the wands and the cups, I, I mix kind of a lot of those together for me. So come up with your own idea about what the wands mean what the cups mean, what the pentacles mean, what the swords mean, and uh, the wands are the element of fire. I mean, yeah, the wands are fire. What are the swords? Uh, air. air. So you got the air, water, fire. You got all the elements, just like uh, in astrology and the astrological signs. Wow. All right. So how are we going to get through all this? I can have to start talking faster. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all on me. Yeah, it's all on me. So we're going to do part two. Everyone wants to go with next Monday, right? Mm-hmm. We're all good for next Monday. Next Monday. Okay. okay. But we're recording. All right. Huh? Um. How about in two weeks then? Is two weeks good for everyone? In two weeks? Nice. Yay, D. <laughs> Is two weeks okay? No, it's part of it. It gives me time to prepare to the next lesson. Sorry. But in two weeks, I'll post it on the meetup that we're going to have this in two weeks, and I promise next week we are going to start reading each other. I taught this class in one session. Two weeks we're going to read each other. And yeah, two weeks we're going to read each other. I taught this class in one one session, and I told everyone to just do the intuitive what they felt intuitively, and people were reading each other very accurately just by looking at the pictures. I told them what the suits meant, and I told them, just look at the pictures and get your meaning. I told them more than that, of course, but that was the basically, it was a total intuitive workshop, and people really loved it, and they walked away with a lot of good things. In this one, I'm trying to integrate the education and the intuitive, and somehow we'll get them all meshing together. So next week, in I mean, two weeks, what I'd like you to do is to try to study the other, get familiar with the other pictures so we don't have to go in great detail on those. All I wanted to do is get the suits down because from now on, um, you know, here's a bunch of wands, right? Here's a guy and he selects a wand and he has all these other wands behind him and I feel like this man selected something, a wand, a belief, a way to go, but he's not quite sure if he selected the right one, because I see him looking behind his back at the other wands, seeing, did I make the right selection? So you just kind of get, yeah, here's a cup. Here's the page of cups, and we see a fish coming out of the cup, whispering in the man's ear, right? It's a cup. He's holding up to his ear, and the fish is talking to him. 
To me, this cup is about spiritual guidance. When some of the fish represents God or the divine whispering in your ear, look at this, swords, tell me this is in action. This guy is on his horse, he's galloping, the wind is blowing through his hair, he's going very briskly, he's got the sword up in the air, charge. He's, he's doing some action here. That's why I associate swords with action, because he's doing something. He's on a mission, he's on a journey. There's no reason why any of us couldn't like put these cards down and get some kind of intuitive meanings out of them. This one here, swords. Swords in the boat. There's a woman and a child in the boat. I see swords all in the deck of the boat. And this man has a, uh, a, a stick. And he's pushing the boat along. And the woman and the child are both covered with a blanket. And he's leading them to safety. I see leading to safety here. This woman, swords. Swords all around her. Tied up and blindfolded. What does that tell you? <laughs> Someone who's lost, don't know their direction, they've been through a lot, there's all these swords around her, almost like a barrier around her. She's tied up and blindfolded. So, you know, this could be a kidnapping here, you know? <laughs> but it could, seriously. Um, it wouldn't have come out, you know, very often, not too many people get kidnapped, but there's definitely something going on with feeling restrained, restricted, not seen clearly. Um, here's a man, pentacles, hard at work. He's, his clothes are tattered. His, he's, he's actually forging every single coin. This man is working hard, no doubt, to make money, maybe to support his family. He's diligent. Here's money, pentacles, about abundance, about money. And I see a scale, someone, and I see people with their hands out. I want some money. This could be a loan. I need money from the bank. The bank is the one with the, the uh, scales. He's got a whole pocket full of money. He's giving it out. So this could mean two things. Either someone wants to borrow, either you're the guy giving the money out, or you're the person kneeling, asking for the money. And this is just the way I break cards. Friendship. I see all these women together celebrating. They all have a chalice. They're all holding it up. King of wands. Wands are manifestation. It's a male energy manifesting something. Because it's, because it's, my belief in wand is manifesting. You wave a wand, poof, it's there. So this is a king of wands. This is interesting, the Queen of Cups, knowledge, wisdom, that's for me, cups, for you, it might be what the book says or whatever, but I see a woman sitting on a throne, holding a chalice with a, with a cover on the chalice, and she's looking at it, she doesn't have a hand, like, let's open it to find out, she's looking at it, I wonder what's in here, right, so she's like, stagnant, looking at this cup, contemplating what's inside, but never dares to lift the cover to find, she's scared to find out what's inside the cup. <coughs> a lot of times I read this card like someone who is afraid to look within, someone who's afraid of knowledge, someone who's afraid of opening the chalice. So just come up with your own things. This is a gift. It looks very spiritual, a cup. It's overflowing with water. There's a hand. Whenever I see a hand come out of a cloud, it's like an unexpected gift or something spiritual. It's coming out of a cloud. So the gift of spiritual knowledge, wisdom, there's a dove. There's actually a communion wafer for those who are Catholic, communion wafer on there. Here's someone with money, has a lot at his feet, at his hands, at his head. For me, it's confusion about money. It's not that I don't have any money, but what do I do with my investments? I'm not sure if my money is safe. He's trying to protect all the money. Here, chivalry, the Knight of Cups. He looks pretty chivalrous, coming in with a gift, presenting a cup, coming in on a white horse. Here's uh, someone with despair, kicking the cups away, bleeding. 
bleeding cups, kicking cups away, blood. Seems like um, he's kicking away what he no longer wants. Could be relationships, could be uh, friends or relatives that don't fit in his world, his or her world. It doesn't have to be a guy. Tell me that's not abandonment. Woman walking away from a guy with crutches. He's got no shoes. <laughs> she's 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 got a got a, a a veil over her head and and is like walking, pretending like I don't know him. <laughs> and he's chasing after her, her with crutches, and he's got like bare feet in the snow. And yeah, that looks something. This looks like people fighting. It's not what the tarot book says. But, um, it's people being playful, is what the tarot book says. I see people uh, in competition. It could even be more like battling, depending on how you feel. It could be playful. But I see people in competition. It's a competitive card. Here's Ace of Swords. And again, the Aces are always a cloud with a hand. Ace of, it looks like a victory to me when I see that. I don't know what the book says. Um, I see this as change. I think that's what the book says. Swift change when you see all these going in the air. Queen of Pentacles. It looks like that's her last coin. <laughs> She's looking at it like, oh my God, I only have one coin left. Seems like she lost a lot of money in an investment or something. Seems like, you know, she's at her last coin and she's kind of, oh my God, it's my last <laughs> coin, you know? I, I had a whole kingdom full of coins. What happened? This looks like ups and downs in money. You see the waves going up and down. It's ups and downs. These are just my meanings. This looks like a happy family to me. Yeah. We have uh, the parents. We have kids dancing. Looks like they just bought a new house. Century 21. <laughs> um, this one. Here's a man with all these choices. Um, there's a cloud, and I see a tiara. I see a snake. I see something that looks like a spaceship. I see something that looks like a devil. I see a mountain coming out of this cup. I see a spiritual man. It looks like there's all these choices in front of this man, and he's reaching out but doesn't grab for any of them. So my meaning is, like, you don't know what to choose in your life. You have all these choices, but you, you haven't, like, committed to any one of them. You're still in a quandary about it. This, defeating your enemies. Tell me that's not defeating your enemies. He has a sword. They're walking away. They drop their swords. They got their hand, head, their heads hung low in defeat. And he's like smiling, and he's got his sword. And they're walking away all tattered. So this is definitely some kind of a victory, a winning. This is a crossroad. Obviously, that's what the tarot book says as well. So you could, like, here's a commitment. Two people committing, exchanging of cups, a commitment. It's a couple. So if I see that, like, next week I'm going to show you, like, the positions. And down here is what you internally feel. So if I see this on the inside, it says you're looking for a commitment from your boyfriend. If I see this on the outside, I'd say you have a commitment. Down here on the inside of your feelings is you're looking for that commitment. So, you know, you're going to get the idea based on the positions. So just, I'm not going to go through all of them. But <coughs> obviously, what is this? A broken heart, yeah? yeah. Rain, a sword. So this is easy stuff. You could all come up with meanings to these cards. So your next printout is going to be all the other cards which is, like, think, 50-some-odd. Thank you. And so it's a lot of cards to go through. And you know what? Do I have all, everyone's email? Everyone registered with their email, right? Every, every person. Okay, we all put... Where's the book? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so... Jessica, gotcha. Penny, I can understand that. Bethany, got it. Madeline, Ray, D, D. Rodriguez, got it. Debbie, got it. Carolyn, I can't read your name, but I can read your email. That's fine. 
and Jim. What I'm going to do, I didn't, I didn't miss anybody, right? Everybody, Kim, I know your email, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to email everybody lesson two, which is all the tower, all the cards, and then your assignment. To make it short so we can start reading and learning the positions and stuff, would be to start making your own meanings for the other 56 pieces of the deck. And I will also email you pictures. So what you can do is cut them out, paste them on the page, learn the meanings, and the same thing with this. you got the pictures of the high arcana. Use some glue stick, paste them on the page, get more familiar with them. We'll go over them briefly again just really briefly, and then we're going to start reading each other. We're going to pair up, read each other, and I'm going to show you the layouts. And hopefully um, tomorrow will be, uh, not tomorrow, in two weeks will be the next, the last class. We'll try to do it in two. If we have to go to three, if you all decide you want to do three, you want to go more in depth, we'll go more in depth. But I like to start, because it gets boring after a while. I'm just be talking all the time and, you know, telling you what I think the cards mean. We need to start getting you guys going and doing it. All right. Can we make a tarot made-up group just for tarot? Why not? Mm-hmm. And we can do just read each other. Yeah. I love hearing what other power that <laughs> Yes, because I never see that so tiny. I, there's something yeah. that I did not ever see until so, now. I'm like, so oh, I love hearing other people's yeah. conversations. Mm-hmm. We could do that if yeah. there's enough people interested. Because we have, what, one, two, three, four, five. 11 of us. That's a good number. Um, we'll see how many people want to pursue it, and if, that, if you want that, we'll do that. I had a couple of people who wanted to come, but they weren't able to make it. Nice. So they're definitely interested. So if we do the recording, if they want to come and get up to speed, give them, you want to give them some handouts if, if you want? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so take some extras, and if they want to come and join us, that would be fine. Or if somebody has a friend that wants to attend, uh, let me know. I'll email them uh, the recording of the class, and we'll send them the handout, and they can join us. Cool. Um, usually, for most of our meetups, we start with a prayer. We didn't do that. We usually end with a prayer. So I'd like to end with a prayer, at least. Okay? Let's all hold hands if you don't mind. Dear God, universe, uh, it's almost like a good reading. Dear God, universe, we thank you for bringing us here all together tonight, this evening. We're a family, we're one, we're all spiritually connected, and we give gratitude for all that we have, and pray for your guidance in using the tarot, that we may enhance our own lives and others who are around us. Does anyone have anything to add? circle too. We put names in the healing circle and people get healed. But I don't want to keep everyone. It's a Monday night. And let me put out the um, the bowl for the donations. Here's the donation bowl. Uh, you can give whatever you like. You don't have to give 20 if you don't have 20. If you're pressed. Uh, give whatever you feel. It's all by donation. Take care. Who's out in the car? Why? No. Yeah, I'm not into like Casadega Dogma and crap.
I just put yours there. Thank you. It's all good. So, uh, no one needs to rush off. I'm going to be out on the porch or hanging out. If anyone has any questions, you'd like to chat, you'd like to have some more coffee. I'm not by any means throwing anyone out. Sometimes we hang out here for an extra half hour, hour, just talking. So, feel free to get to know everybody. And if you have any questions for me, I'm definitely available to answer any questions. Also, there's cards and flyers here that people put. My cards are the purple ones, if you'd like one of my cards. Um, otherwise, uh, have a good evening, but I'll be here to answer any questions you may have. Yeah, take treats for the road. Take a water for the road. Wow, there's that much you aren't, Peter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wouldn't it be shorter to put down what you aren't? Exactly. <laughs> you got it covered. Yeah. I do. You know, as I started doing the work, more people came with more different situations, and I just started becoming all these things. Medicine man, exorcist, uh, suicide hotline, everything. So.